terror is up worldwide. The statistics indicate that. The fatalities are way up. Uh, there are new bombs, very big bombs, trucks being reinforced for those bombs. There are bombs that go through magnetometers. The bomb maker is still alive. There are more groups than ever. And there is huge malevolence out there. Welcome to the program, everybody. From the edge of America, I'm Rick Amato. Hey, maybe it's just me, but it sure seems like a hell of a good idea to never kick a sleeping dog while it's lying down, especially when that dog is a wild-eyed, bloodthirsty Islamist group that is even considered too radical for places like Egypt. Now, I'm not saying Al-Qaeda is a sleeping dog, but President Obama sure treated it that way, actually worse, when he used sophomoric language in comparing the jihadist group to a JV basketball team in a recent interview with a New Yorker. The good news here, if there is any, is that while a lot of women and metrosexual men probably don't know what a JV basketball team is, neither likely does Muhammad or Abdul sitting out in the desert somewhere. And for those of you who don't understand the meaning of President Obama's name calling of Al-Qaeda, let's just say it wasn't good. Probably insulting is a better description. And it tempts them to respond with spite the only thing JV here is our president in the Oval Office. As the British senior military advisor, Sir Hugh Strawn, said last week, Obama looks inept on the world stage. Hey, but don't take it from him. How about former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, who said disinterested was a better description. President Obama, let's just hope the jihadists are as disinterested in your words as you appear to be in our national security. Joining me at this time with insight and perspective from our studio in Southern California is Dr. Mordecai Kadar of the Center of Middle East Studies in Islam. And joining, joining us via Skype is New York Times best-selling author and founder of Act for America, Brigitte Gabrielle. Brigitte, let's start with you. Is it wise, in your opinion, for the president of the U.S. to publicly ridicule a group like Al-Qaeda? Uh, it is not only not wise, it is dangerous uh, because it gives Al-Qaeda two signals. It tells them that our uh, president is basically making fun of them. And second, it showed them that our president is so ignorant about the threat and he is downplaying the threat to the American public, even joking about it. This is at a time where Al-Qaeda is metastasizing throughout the world. Uh, and it shows that our government is relaying the wrong information to the masses in the United States, misleading the public, and it shows them that they can grow, they can organize, they can strike anywhere. America is asleep and America is being led by an ignorant man who not only doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's actually making fun of his ignorance. Dr. Kadar, you're visiting, you live in Israel, you're visiting here in Southern California. Do you agree with Brigitte Gabrielle's assessment? Not only uh, I agree with her, but it's even worse. Because when you make fun out of an Arab or a Muslim, you actually motivate, motivate him to take revenge only for this. Never mind other things. Only for making fun out of him. And I, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think that this is correct to do this. They have enough motivation to attack America as to, to pour more oil on this uh, fire. I'm almost sure that uh, this was not wise to say such a thing in order to more motivate them against America. Brigitte, he used very American, uh, very much American slang. Uh, I don't know if you know what a JV basketball team even is. I know Dr. Uh, Kadar wasn't sure, and that doesn't surprise me one bit. How likely is it that someone is going to explain to these uh, Islamic radicals what the meaning of the president's comments were? Uh, I'm sure uh, Al-Qaeda already has uh, Americans within its ranks. I mean, let's not forget that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, Americans who are already now serving with Al-Qaeda overseas. Gaddam is, is a perfect example. So uh, they, will they will have people who will translate that to them. Uh, but in general, people do not understand it on the streets. Like Mordechai and I both did not understand it. I mean, when the president said it, and I've been living in this country for 25 years, I, I remember looking and saying, well, what does that mean? Um, but uh, Al-Qaeda Al knows how strong Al-Qaeda is. And Al-Qaeda is becoming very well aware as to how uh, ignorant and how apathetic our government is becoming in really um, uh, dealing with Al-Qaeda. Dr. Kadar. Uh, the president's words shock you at all? Uh, 
I'm not shocked at all about what happens in America because ignorance about the Middle East in general, about Islam, about Islamic groups in this country is devastating. Me, as somebody who tries to educate Americans, but you know, the more I do, the more I see that they don't understand, don't get it. The Middle East works according to different, totally different rules, uh, different culture, different uh, set of priorities, different of uh, uh, values, different, to totally different things. And people in this country are trying to judge Islamic societies and Islamic organizations, the Middle East in, in particular, through American lens and American mindset. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. All right, let's shift gears here for a second. Brigitte Gabrielle, you are the founder of an organization known as Act for America. For our viewers' sake, Act for America is the largest grassroots organization in America uh, on national security issues. You are pushing uh, uh, John Boehner, Representative John Boehner, to create a... Uh, a select a special committee to investigate Benghazi. You have a lot of Republican support, but John Boehner is resisting your efforts. Tell us about that, please. Uh, they are. You know, it's a crying shame that 16 months after the terrorist attack in Benghazi, the American public uh, has no accountability and no support on the part of the leadership to really get down to the truth. And that's also the Republican leadership. We're not only talking about the Democrats here. We're talking about the Republicans. And it's not only Boehner. It's Mike Rogers and the likes who are blocking uh, 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 to, to uh, set up a select committee to investigate Benghazi. Now, uh, Congressman Wolf of uh, Virginia introduced House Resolution 36, which calls to uh, for a select committee on Benghazi with a subpoena power. And that's the magic word here. Because to date, uh, Rick, we have already five different committees set up to investigate Benghazi, but none of them have subpoena power and none of them are able to actually be able to subpoena people and have them under oath tell the truth. And that's the only way we're going to get to the truth. We at actforamerica.org, and I encourage our people who are watching right now, Go to the website. We issued a press release with the names of the co-sponsors who co-sponsored that bill. We now have about 182 co-sponsors. Uh, and you can find out if your elected official have not, has not co-sponsored this bill, you need to call them and respectfully tell them that you want them to support this bill so we can get down to what happened in Benghazi. Brigitte, we're not surprised. I think our viewers would not be surprised to hear some some Democratic lawmakers would would be resisting your efforts because perhaps they're trying to pr protect the political aspirations of Hillary Clinton, politicizing Benghazi. But why do you suppose we're seeing John Boehner and other Republicans, which you just list, who are resisting your efforts? All you want is an investigation. You want transparency on a national security issue. And you're getting blowback. Why do you suppose you're getting it from the right? And we're, we're, and we're getting a blowback because they're trying to hide something. Uh, uh, Boehner is a part of the Super 8 in Congress, which is a committee that gets a briefing on intelligence in more detail than anybody else in Congress. So they have been briefed on information that I believe they do not want to come out to the American public. Uh, that is a concern because the national security issue is an American issue. It's not a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic right. issue. We need to get down to what happened in Benghazi for America are dead, including an ambassador. We need to find out why, who killed them. And, and they have to put their political aspirations aside and their political interests aside and focus on what is best for the country. Because the longer we go without um, basically arresting, um, uh, trying, and, uh, and finding judgment against those who committed that attack, we are sending a signal to the world that American blood is cheap, America does not care about its citizens. America forsakes its citizens in the type of need. And America is apathetic when it comes to the threat of radical Islam. So you can kill Americans. America could care less. You will have no consequences to suffer, and you can continue on. That will encourage more attacks in the future. We have got to get to the bottom of Benghazi now. And whoever is going to suffer, whether Republicans or Democrats, the, the, the interest of the country supersedes the interests and the benefits and the perks of any elected official on Capitol Hill. Oh. And that's why we want people involved. We want people to go to actforamerica.org, click on our Benghazi petition, find what you can do as a citizen to make a difference. All right. In our remaining moment, I want to shift gears with Dr. Kadar. Um, 
Of course, the U.S. just uh, agreed to a new nuclear deal with Iran. That has direct implications where you live in Israel. Your take, your, your opinion on that nuclear deal. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, transparency. Where is the agreement? I don't know where the agreement is. I don't know what's written there. So far, it is behind uh, closed doors. Nobody reveals what happened there. And I ask him, I'm asking America, Here hey guys, he what, is, what is the transparency in this country? First of all, he he go ahead. Secondly, secondly, it is not only a danger on Israel. It is a danger on all over the Middle East. And you know what? It will come to the shores of Europe and to these shores as well. Here on this show, we've said that, Ameri that the Obama administration is, is diminishing the relationship between America and Israel and elevating the relationship with Iran in America, prioritizing Iran over Israel. Is that too harsh of, a, of an assessment? It's not only Israel in this issue. Where is Saudi Arabia? Where is the Gulf um, Emirates? Where is Egypt? Actually, America today I would say to to extent stabs its friends and allies uh, in the back by pushing Iran forward, by encouraging the Iranians, encouraging those ayatollahs to think that they are prophets. And as and look, look at this, these are real documents issued by by, by Hezbollah, which is an offshoot of uh, of real the quickly, Iranians, real quick, which, which which you can you can see very clearly how they depict Khomeini, their, their uh, leader as somebody who is enlightened by the divine light and make him into a, what they call masum, right. means infallible, he cannot make any, dis any mistake. He is in the level of a prophet, just like Khamenei, the today's leader. Again, he has this encounter with the hidden imam, as they believe. And so in their view, they, they look at the Americans as wine drinkers and swine eaters who have no right to tell them, the Iranians, anything because the Iranians are the believers and Americans are the infidels. All and right. they actually, Amer Americans capitulate to this issue. And I'm, I'm asking, hey guys, is this America or right. some paper tiger? Dr. Kadar, it's an important message, as is Brigitte Gabrielle's. We have to leave it right there. We thank you both for joining us and good luck on your, on your uh, projects. Thanks, Thanks a lot. All right, Brigitte Gabrielle from Act for America, Dr. Marakai uh, Kadar, visiting us from Israel. Our next story is that of a parent's love for a child and the great lengths they went through to get justice. That's next. Don't go anywhere.